So let's take a look at what the legal eagle had to say about this verdict. We have a verdict in the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case. Now, I'll just say this much straight up as a content creator on the internet, my analysis on the situation is going to revolve around the negative feedback and the backlash that you receive. Even if you go against the grain, the grain being that like Johnny Depp is a infallible, perfect human being who was uh, abused by the tyrant and abusive psycho Amber Heard, obviously. Like if you don't say that, people will come up your ass and destroy you, okay? So while I do think that the legal eagle, given what he had said in the past about this case and given what he liked on Twitter and given what his opinion is, as a person with like a little bit of fucking legal knowledge, you know, a lot more than uh, the average person, might not actually show his true perspective in this circumstance. Uh, he'll, he will probably take the most centrist position he can. I'm just going to say it. Maybe it's not the case, but we can take a look and at like it. And like everything in the trial itself. But part of it is literally because, you know, people are unreasonable and psychotic about this case on the internet. And they are also betraying... They're betraying uh, the, the, you know, seriousness of the case by behaving in the way that they are behaving. Self... It's controversial. The jury ruled in favor of Johnny Depp in his libel suit against Amber Heard. Depp sued his former wife for writing about being a domestic abuse victim because he said he never abused her. The jury awarded Depp $15 million in damages, $10 million in compensatory damages, and $5 million in punitive damages. The jury also ruled in favor of Amber Heard on one of her counterclaims against Depp. She alleged that Depp directed a smear campaign against her, having his ex-lawyer saying she fabricated the evidence of her abuse. The jury awarded her $2 million in compensatory damages and nothing in punitives. So at the end of the day, they both win. Hooray! No, but seriously, how can they both have defamed each other? Let's dig into this verdict. Now, first of all, and I, I hate that I have to say this, no one is going to jail. This is a civil case and no one is guilty. People are liable in a civil case. They are not guilty or not guilty, despite what some putative law professor has said. This is a civil trial. There's no guilt. Wait, what? Despite very odd development, the judge sent back the jury to fill out the form of damages. It is not clear why that would be the case unless they found defamation. Otherwise, it seems odd to force a jury to state damages without finding of what guilt. What some putative law professor has Depp said. Depp was only found guilty for the statement of his agent. The jury also received any punitive award for that agent with the re with the reduction. Depp can walk away with ten million three hundred thousand. Uh, again, the court can consider a reduction of the award. Civil trial. Remitter. There's no guilt involved. Now, in fairness, about half the states do have a criminal defamation statute, including Virginia, but this is not one of those cases. It's just two people suing each other. The state is not involved. But as you probably know, here we have two public figures suing each other for defamation. And when you have celebrities, you generally have a higher standard of proof to make your claim. The law makes it difficult for public people to win a defamation suit, yeah. even if a published story contains inaccuracies. In order for a public figure to win, the jury has to find that the defendant made statements about them with actual malice. Actual malice means uh, knowledge of the falsity or at a minimum, a reckless disregard for the truth of the statements. It has nothing to do with animosity. Now, as you probably know, Amber Heard wrote an op-ed in the Washington Post that contained these sentences. Quote, then two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse, and I felt the full force of our culture's wrath for women who speak out. And quote, I had the rare vantage point of seeing in real time how institutions protect men accused of abuse. Now, Johnny Depp challenged these sentences and also the headline written by the Washington Post itself. Quote, Amber Heard colon, I spoke up about sexual violence and faced our culture's wrath. That has to change. Depp sued Heard alleging these sentences were defamatory. And during closing arguments, Heard's lawyer told the jury that if they believe Depp abused her even one time, that he cannot prove defamation. If Amber was abused by Mr. Depp even one time, then she wins. Now, during deliberations, the jury had to evaluate the evidence that they heard over the six like, if that's the case, then, like, you know, this is a false fucking, uh, this is this is a, a five male, two female jury that was not sequestered. One of the fucking jurors quite literally said that his wife texted him uh, uh, stating what, like, that that uh, Amber Heard was a psycho. He, he mentioned that and was still uh, allowed to stay on the jury. And that is the reason why, um, that is the reason why uh, uh, the, the, the deliberation went the way it did, right? The verdict in and of itself, considering that there was mutual abuse from my point of view, okay, and not just my point of view, but my my point of view that is backed by the marriage counselor that was one of the most reliable fucking uh, uh, expert witnesses 
that offered expert testimony, plus also their professional analysis on the situation, implies that Johnny Depp also fucking uh, implies that Johnny Depp also fucking hit Amber Heard. His own words imply that he hit Amber Heard, which is why it was part of the reason why this was a shocking fucking verdict. Do I think that Johnny Depp was still the primary victim of abuse? In, in this circumstance, yes, I do. That's why I always said 30-70, 30-70, 30% Johnny Depp, 70% Amber Heard. Now, um, implication equals does not equal proof. Dog, it's not the implication. It is quite literally Johnny Depp's own words of him being a monster and admitting it and apologizing for it. If you can recognize that Amber Heard admitted on a phone conversation to Johnny Depp that he hit him, he hit him, but like didn't hit him that hard and he was a pussy, then you should be able to understand the exact same fucking thing. Okay? You should be able to understand the exact same thing on the other side, unless there's some other motivating reasons. You're just scared to say it's 50-50? No, because I don't think it's 50-50. Because the reason why I don't think it's 50-50 is because there was only one party that, 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 according to, again, their marriage counselor, according to their couple's counselor, who testified on the fucking stand, was trying to routinely keep the arguments going and would escalate to a form of physical violence. Did not shy away from uh, that, that escalation. Okay. He never said he hit her though. Saying he was a monster doesn't mean equals I hit her. No, the fucking, the, the people that were there were apologizing for his behavior. Come on guys. You're being, you're huffing on fucking copium. Like you're literally huffing on fucking copium. Okay. If you think that Johnny Depp didn't, uh, didn't hit, uh, Amber, Heard, didn't kick Amber Heard on the fucking private jet. Like Jesus Christ, dude. I don't even care about Johnny Depp being like, let's burn this fucking cunt or whatever the fuck in text messages. Like he's obviously at that point really fucking pissed off. And, and, um, and this is like past the, the, the relationship ending. This is like in a situation where he's like, fuck this person. She ruined my fucking life. That's what she's, that's what he's texting to his friends. I'm not even talking about that shit. Okay. I am basically talking about him. Why would Amber take pics from 2013? Did she make this plan in 2013 to shut? Yeah, like there's there are instances where like Amber Heard did actually fucking get uh there there is truth to what Amber Heard was saying, okay? But also there was also a lot of lies that Amber Heard told on the stand, okay? Conflicting testimony and uh, conflicting testimony with respect to like actual expert witness or not expert witnesses, but like people even on Amber Heard's side. Given the the severity of the abuse that she was accusing uh, Johnny Depp of committing. And also the the um, the conflicting evidence that came out from uh, pr like the the people that were involved, not the people that were directly involved, but people that like saw Amber Heard, uh, including the fucking medical professional that is her fucking friend. It's really hard to come to that point that it's really hard to to believe what she's saying that like she actually was fucking brutalized so severely that her nose broke and that you know she had two black eyes and shit like that. Okay, so that. Paired up with how bad her fucking legal team was, paired up with how much people love Johnny Depp, uh, created this situation where like she lost a fucking 100% almost impossible to lose defamation case. Okay? I have repeated this so many times. It's so, it's so crazy. Six week trial and apply the jury instructions given to them by the judge. With Depp's defamation claims, they were looking at instruction C, which you can see here. So the jury had to decide whether Heard made or republished any of these statements. These were false statements, whether they harmed his reputation, and whether Amber Heard acted with actual malice. They answered yes. Yes, she said or republished these words. Yes, they were false. And yes, they hurt his reputation. The jury likely decided everything that Amber Heard said about abuse was false and that she did it with reckless disregard for the truth. And as a result, Johnny Depp sustained about $15 million in damages, $10 million in compensatory damages, which is meant to compensate him for the damage that he actually suffered, as well as $5 million in punitives, that is to punish Amber Heard for her statements. Now the judge cut the punitives down to $350,000, bringing the total to $10.35 million. Now those are obviously large numbers, but it kind of makes sense in the context of Johnny Depp. He is a famous movie star and he alleges 
probably truthfully, that these allegations have really hurt his career and hurt his ability to make millions and millions of dollars. So it's entirely possible that he lost $10 million as a result of the statements that Amber Heard made against him. And given the general nature of Heard's statements, the fact that the jury found in Depp's favor probably means that the jury likely didn't believe any of Heard's substantive claims of abuse. Now, some have argued that Heard got a raw deal because her column did not mention Depp by name. But Depp successfully argued that it was an example of what's called defamation by implication because- By the way, that is also fucking bullshit. Like, bro, come on, you were talking about Johnny Depp. Obviously you were talking about fucking Johnny Depp, dude. Like, that's crazy. Like, you're not making a broader point about like, uh, you know, sexual harassment or sexual violence and, and the way that you're mistreated uh, or, or the way that like victims are mistreated uh, just because you didn't mention Johnny Depp by fucking name, but where you're like, you're very obviously mentioning Johnny Depp. Like that, 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 and then she also literally admitted it in court too. So it doesn't matter unless she was like, yeah, I'm talking about Elon and James Franco, which that's not the case. No one fucking thinks that Elon Musk or James Franco sexually abused her or, or abused her in any capacity. She never actually came out against them. You know what I mean? Parts of the column referred to the allegations of abuse that she made against him following their breakup in 2016. And it's probably fair to say that the general public knew about Heard's connection to Depp and that they would have assumed that the allegations made in the op-ed referred to Depp because of that connection and that she was directing those statements at Johnny Depp. And there's plenty of law on this. This is- I don't trust the person who's friends with tons of abusers in my opinion law. Bro, they're in Hollywood. What are you talking about? I mean, I agree with you, but like, both parties are friends with tons of abusers by nature of their job, okay? Like, there is not a person in Hollywood that's like, oh man, I, I have no friends that, that are abusers. Like, what? What do you mean, dude? You're in Hollywood. Hello? Like, it, it's just like, good luck. Good luck finding a person that is not a, a, a pedophile or abuser if you are in this industry. This is not unusual for a defamation by implication case. And that takes us to Amber Heard's counterclaims. You'd think that if Heard defamed Depp, then they would dismiss Heard's claims and that would be the end of the story. But what fun would that be? As you know, uh, the jury also found that Depp defamed Heard, but it looks like that relates to a statement uh, only tangentially related to the main abuse statements. Now, after Depp sued Heard in 2021, she filed a counterclaim against him. She said that Depp directed his ex-lawyer, Adam Waldman, to make defamatory statements about her, including these three. Statement A, quote, Amber Heard and her friends in the media used fake sexual violence allegations as both a sword and a shield, depending on their needs. They have selected some of her sexual violence hoax facts as a sword, inflicting them on the public and Mr. Depp. Statement B, quote, quite simply, this was an ambush, a hoax. They set Mr. Depp up by calling the cops, but the first step didn't do the trick. The officers came to the penthouses, thoroughly searched and interviewed and left after seeing no damage to face or property. So Amber and her friends spilled a little wine and roughed up the place, got their stories straight under the direction of a lawyer and publicist, and then placed a second call to 911. Statement C, quote, we have reached the beginning of the end of Miss Heard's abuse hoax against Mr. Depp. And the jury reviewed the evidence and with respect to at least one of these statements, believed that that was the case. Specifically, they decided that statement B- It's such a weird centrist take, by the way, because like they really fucking fired off. They really fired off on the like the tiniest bit of like counter as like, uh, as like, wow, that's defamation while simultaneously like overlooking, I think in my opinion, credible fucking accusations that Amber Heard was making. Okay. In the broader majority of like the Amber Heard trial, in most of the circumstances, in the instances, if you especially pair it up with like testimony from people that work with Johnny Depp, but testimony from people that work with Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, when you look at situations like that, it's very hard to see Amber Heard as a credible witness to her own victimization, to her own abuse, right? But there were instances where like she was demonstrably, in my opinion, credible. Okay? Like, come on. Especially the private jet incident, okay? But when you are so when you are so bad at um yeah, not the I'm not talking about the sexual abuse. I'm talking about physical. Okay? But when you are talking about is the last time I be pro Amber Heard I just joined a little? No. But when you're talking about like 14 incidents and um and some of them 
like the most credible, supposedly the ones that have to be the most credible are the most incredible and hard to believe. Yeah, you're you're gonna lose credibility with the with the uh, with the jurors. No, it's because you're a simp. Especially when paired up with your fucking uh, horrible team of lawyers. The long paragraph about a specific incident was false. The main facts about that incident were relayed to the jury by Heard and her friends, and the very same people that the jury found had completely made up things in order to hurt Depp. Now, we'll need to hear from the jury to understand exactly what they were thinking, but we can presume that the Hassan jury is the reviewed most misogynistic the streamer on Twitch? Yes, I am. ...evidence and concluded that Amber Heard and her friends didn't orchestrate an abuse hoax on that occasion. Maybe they didn't spill wine or rough up the place. They didn't work uh, with a lawyer or publicist. They might not have gotten their stories straight. Uh, if this is what the jury meant, then they could be claiming that the underlying incident is still based on a lie, but that Heard orchestrated the lie in a different way, or that she was lying about other things and not this thing. But at the end of the day, the jury awarded $2 million to Heard for this particular falsity. These same jurors probably found that she acted with actual malice and concocting a hoax that included fake bruises and fake tears and fake claims. And thus statements A and C were therefore not defamatory, only statement B, which referred to a very specific uh, tangential incident. So both Depp and Heard were awarded compensatory damages. These are things that are meant to compensate a plaintiff to be in the same position that they would be if they weren't injured. Uh, things like financial losses, medical bills, lost income, and reduced earning potential. And a damage award can also consider non-monetary losses as well, like emotional pain or physical physical pain, loss of companionship, all of those would be considered compensatory damages. But Johnny Depp was awarded punitive damages as well, which are designed to warn others and punish this particular defendant. They are assessed when a jury wants to punish someone who acted totally outside the bounds of appropriate conduct. And they're only available in Virginia if the defendant has acted wantonly, oppressively, or with such malice as to evince a spirit of malice or criminal indifference to civil obligations. But in Virginia, punitive damages are capped at $350,000 by statute. Now, the jury found that Amber Heard had defamed Johnny Depp and that her conduct satisfied the very high standard for punitive damages. Now, they awarded him a lot of money, $5 million in punitive damages, but the judge reduced that damages award to $350,000 as required by statute. Now, the, the jury wouldn't have known that going into deliberations. That's to make sure that they don't... Uh, I just, I really hate this case because like... I just, I hate this case because I feel like it brought out the worst in, in both sides. Like I, I, like I hate, I hate it because like people will say like, oh, both sides, five head, like you're centrist, whatever. But like, it really did, dude. It made so many people on the left come across like incredibly fucking out of touch with reality. It made so many people on obviously Johnny Depp's side be even more pathological and more misogynistic than they actually fucking were originally. But like, holy shit, dude. Like everyone, everyone is just unironically like, no, this is my thing. Okay. This is my thing. I have this opinion. I have a very strong opinion on this matter. And fuck you if you uh, don't agree with it. When it's a circumstance that is so fucking not black and white, or at the very least, if you're going to say black and white, like it's a, it's a situation where like, yeah, both parties conducted some level of fucking abusive behavior. It kills me. It kills me when it's like, it kills me, especially because like Amber Heard's testimony across the board is perfect. Okay. It's literally perfect. If only a couple fucking things were different, like uh, other witnesses involved uh, in the relationship, other people that were around in this duration, uh, it's, it's literally perfect. It, it would be perfectly aligned with the experiences that so many people go through, so many women go through. Okay, what I mean by that is, and I will describe to you. No, stop saying what in question marking. I'm going to explain it to you. Abuse in relationships, and think about it from, think about it from the perspective of of uh, Johnny Depp. Okay, if you're Johnny, if you're on Johnny Depp's side in this situation, you will recognize that abuse is usually invisible. Okay, abuse is usually invisible. It's not very easy to see. Plenty of domestic abuse victims hide their abuse. They put makeup on. They blame themselves. Okay? 
That's just, that is the reality, which is precisely why this becomes an incredibly complex situation to analyze, okay? And that goes for women and men, okay? That goes for women and men. Do you understand? People routinely fucking stay in abusive relationships. Uh, they, they, uh, uh, they, they hide their injuries. They lie to their fucking friends. They don't fucking set up like, uh, they don't try to like set evidence up, uh, for the future when you do have a inevitable abuse case or anything like that. People hide it for the most part. Okay. Which is why in a, he said, she said situation, which is why the reason why so many People are like, even if they're credible fucking domestic abuse uh, victims right now, they're terrified of coming out and saying anything about it. Okay? Because even if they are actual victims of abuse, even if they're like legitimate victims of abuse, like there are so many underlying systemic hurdles to overcome. Okay? There are so many underlying systemic hurdles to overcome and it's all ultimately very difficult to prove. The cops ultimately are not very good at uh, dealing with uh, abuse instances, okay? Uh, they're, they're not very good at that. They're not good at dealing with uh, domestic violence, notoriously, right? Which is why I say, like, for so many people who are victims of abuse or so many people who are woke, they, they look at Amber Heard and refuse to see anything but a victim, they refuse to see Amber Heard as anyone but a victim because it corresponds so perfectly with like real victims and everything we've learned about the Me Too movement and everything we've learned to everything we've tried to push for to unlearn with respect to the Me Too movement. Like the believe women concept revolves around not immediately believing women across the board in the way that like reactionaries say. It doesn't mean that like women are incapable of telling a lie. It just means don't reflexively disbelieve women. Why was this a necessity? Why was there this kind of attitude shift? Why were people why were people pushing for this? Because automatically people would reflexively disbelieve women. And they still do. There are plenty of people who still do. Right? So I do understand why so many people are like, no, Amber Heard was a victim. She was a perfect victim, and Johnny Depp fucking destroyed her. And you're a piece of shit. You're a misogynist for fucking even mentioning that Johnny Depp uh, was abused and like everything is uh, slanted against women in this system because everything is slanted against women in this system. That systemic reality is true, okay? Everything is slanted against victims in general in this system. Uh, and more often than not, it's, it's uh, at least women uh, in the hands of men, right? But having said that, the inverse of that can happen. And in my opinion, in this situation, at least, there is enough evidence to show that the inverse of that did happen to a certain degree. Johnny Depp was not a perfect victim in this circumstance. He also was abusive as well. He was toxic. He was emotional. He was a wreck. He was going in and out of, uh, of addiction issues that were made worse, uh, ultimately, by the shitty relationship that he was in, okay? And by the end of the relationship, he tried to get away from this uh, uh, relationship, and it got even worse every time he tried to get away. Okay, he's a, a fucking annoying theater kid, which is uh, ultimately, you know, uh, something that you also need to, uh, I think, factor in. I'm sorry, Johnny Depp Simps. I don't think he's like, a, you know, very cool guy, but that doesn't change the reality that I do believe he was a victim of domestic abuse and domestic violence in the hands of Amber Heard. Okay. Ugh. That's the reason why it's very difficult to have like a completely one-sided approach. Okay, it's 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 incredibly difficult to have a one-sided approach. In my opinion, it's in disingenuous to have a one-sided uh, Amber Heard is in the right or Johnny Depp is in the right approach to this. And that's why I always go back to the marriage counselor, the relationship counselor, the the therapist that uh, that gave her testimony in the beginning of the trial, claiming that there was mutual abuse in this relationship. Okay. that uh, Amber Heard kept amping it up throughout the uh, relationship and would not shy away from escalating to physical acts in an effort to keep Johnny Depp in the relationship and also in the altercation, in the conversation. And that was also perfectly uh, uh, collaborated or corroborated by Amber Heard's own fucking uh, uh, testimony, her own statements on on record 
on phone conversations where she admitted to hitting Johnny Depp, where she admitted to, where she basically gaslit Johnny Depp by saying no one will believe you. Okay? You're underestimating how many people already know this, Haas. You're not right as you think you are on this. It happened to a further degree, Hassan. What? I don't know what you mean by this. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, okay? I'm not, I'm not, like... This is a really fucking unique and really complex situation that everybody has incredibly uh, strong opinions on. A fucked up take, but I think she shouldn't have come forward with her story. Some relationships are complex, toxic in a way that can't be easily boiled down into a narrative, but maybe victims disagree with that. Yeah, my take is, dude, if you're going to fucking, if you're going to beat up, how many times are you wrong uh, a day? I don't know, dude. The only time I'm right is when I'm fucking clapping your mother's ass cheeks at night when she says, you are so right for fucking me so hard. I get a lot wrong, but that's the one thing I get right. Also, you're grounded. Take a minute off. I'm your stepfather. But also the father that stepped up. Anyway, what I was trying to say is this. Um... If you have abused your partner, okay, but then you go on a, a conquest to say that you are the sole victim in this toxic, abusive relationship, and you unload into, uh, you, you use the media and you write fucking articles and shit, uh, like you, you basically get ahead of the narrative you get ahead of the curve and be like yo you are literally like that my partner was the abusive one i was not certainly and it comes out that 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 is not the case yeah you're gonna get fucked you know what i mean it's just the truth if you fucking write about how like you're victim of domestic violence and abuse in the hands of your abusive partner and you go and you defend the son in in the united kingdom in a fucking court case that's like not even directly about you okay and you do all of that and, and then you turn around and write an article for the fucking guardian about how you're like a victim of your sole victim of domestic abuse and then there's plenty of people who are like hold on that's not the case actually like you were pretty fucking shitty you were pretty shitty and and you did all the shit and then even people on your side who were supposed to be on your side are like, well, I didn't actually see any bruises in this circumstance. Like, I'm a medical professional. Then, yeah, you're going to not look credible on the stand. What the fuck are you doing? And people don't actually want to... I don't know. People don't actually want to see that. But, of course, there's a lot of turfs and swerfs involved in the Amber Heard side, too. I'm sorry to say this. Maybe some people are male feminists, female feminists, like people who are just like really overboard with the with the narrative that like completely have been like there's no way in in any case that like a man as cringy and as toxic and as fucking silly as Johnny Depp could not be an abuser. He's friends with fucking Marilyn Manson after all, who is also an abuser, right? Like there's no way. It sounds great. And then on the other hand, you have like someone like Amber Heard who is a woman. Okay? She's a bisexual woman. She probably did get fucking abused. Like, come on. It's very, very real. I mean, look, and then you, you jump on this fucking, uh, bandwagon or you jump on this narrative and you're just like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm totally, totally 100% on the side of Amber Heard. And anyone who's like, uh, even questioning this main narrative, questioning this media narrative is like actually a fucking violent meninist, misogynist piece of shit are forgetting the fact that like Amber Heard is literally friends with Barry Weiss and is dating like Eve Barlow and some of the worst fucking weirdos on the internet. Like, the fuck are you doing? Elon Musk. I mean, come on, dude. Anyway, let's continue. Shift all of the punitive damages into the compensatory James damages Franco. award. Uh, but after the verdict was reached, the judge capped the amount that was required by law. Tangentially, you might also hear lawyers referring to the state farm standard where uh, punitive damages are uh, capped as a matter of constitutional law. Uh, that's a Supreme Court case. That doesn't apply here. There, there was a specific statute in Virginia that limited punitive damages to $350,000. Uh, that doesn't really implicate the, the state farm Supreme Court case that being said uh, after the johnny dibs takes calling her a whore and slut lines up with her claims that he constantly accused her of cheating oh dude i agree with that wait what do you mean i never said that i don't think johnny depp like fucking thought that she was a whore and like accused her of cheating on him and stuff no i no i'm not saying johnny depp's a good guy dude what the fuck
No, he's a fucking freak, dude. Shut up. But you don't have to be a fucking good guy to also be domestically abused, okay? Well, what the fuck? Oh my lord, dude. Y'all are fucking crazy. I swear to God. He's not a good person. He's not. Johnny Depp is not a good person. Okay, he's not. I know a lot of you want to believe that because, you know, Captain Jack Sparrow... Uh, I don't think Johnny Depp thinks he's a good person, okay? Like, I don't think Johnny Depp agrees with you. Uh, when you you can turn around and be like, oh, man, I love Sauvage or whatever fucking cologne company for, like, staying along with Johnny Depp because he's such a good person. Oh, my God, whatever. But, like, no, I don't think even Johnny Depp believes he's a fucking good person. I think he's a piece of shit, and he recognizes that he's a piece of shit, Okay? This is not a conversation about you. You're just like a dick writer for Johnny Depp, which is fine, I guess, okay? Kevin Spacey visits children at Atlanta Hospital. Yeah, dude, love Kevin Spacey. Good guy. You know, he did, he, he's done some good things. He's done a lot of charity. You know, I love Elon Musk. He's a great guy. Dude, does so much charity. I love, I love Jeffrey Bezos, dude. Such a good guy. He does so much charity. You know? Good guy doesn't really implicate the, the State Farm Supreme Court case. That being said, uh, after the punitive damages were capped, Johnny Depp uh, was entitled to $10.35 million. Though Amber Heard was awarded $2 million in compensatory damages uh, related to the Statement B that we just talked about, netting uh, Johnny Depp uh, $8.35 million at the end of the day. So what's next? Can Johnny Depp sue the Washington Post? Well, sure, but it's incredibly unlikely that he'd win. You can sue anyone for anything at any time, but there's no reason to believe that the Washington Post would have known uh, of the falsity of the statements. And on top of that, the Washington Post simply published Amber Heard's article. Uh, the only part of the article that was written by the Washington Post was the headline, Amber Heard colon, I spoke up about sexual violence and faced our culture's wrath. That has to change, which more or less summarizes the things that Amber Heard actually said. So good luck proving knowledge of falsity or recklessness with respect to the truth by the Washington Post itself. Though given that the article is still online, Depp might sue for an injunction to take that article down. But by that same token, could Amber Heard sue the ACLU? The Washington Post published Heard's op-ed, but the ACLU helped her write it. Heard had promised to I think one of the sussiest parts about this is the ACLU. And I say this as like someone who's donated to them a lot. Um, like, what the fuck are they doing? Like, what, what are you doing? You're the ACLU and you're like, you're like helping someone write a fucking op-ed like this. You're not even doing your due diligence. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? What, what, what are you doing? Donate $7 million from her divorce settlement to two charities, including the ACLU. And so far, uh, she's only paid the ACLU part of that money. Could she claim that they did a bad job of ghostwriting the op-ed? Maybe negligence? Well, again, you can sue anyone for anything at any time. Sure, this is theoretically possible, but it would be extremely complicated and probably doomed. Though more tenuous arguments have been made. Maybe Heard will use it to try and claw back some of her donation. Who knows? Complete speculation. But what about an appeal of the jury's verdict? Amber Heard has vowed to appeal, and even though Depp was also found to have defamed Heard, Depp was not surprisingly very pleased with the verdict. Depp said that Heard's op-ed changed his whole life in the blink of an eye, uh, but that the jury had given his life back. Now, Heard was not pleased with the verdict and said that she was heartbroken that the mountain of evidence still was not enough to stand up to the disproportionate power, influence, and sway of my ex-husband. However, there is a really interesting wrinkle with respect to Amber Heard's potential appeal. Virginia law section 16.1-107 states States, quote, no appeals shall be allowed unless and until the party applying for the same or someone for him shall give bond in an amount and with sufficient surety approved by the judge or by his clerk, if there is one, or in an amount sufficient to satisfy the judgment of the court. So in other words, uh, for Amber Heard to be able to appeal, she has to post an, a bond for the entire amount of the judgment, millions of dollars, and that's no fun. And although people talk about what precedent this verdict sets, what lawyers mean by precedent is different from how regular people often use that word. In the law, precedent is set in, uh, by published judicial opinions. Legally speaking, jury verdicts don't set any precedent whatsoever. You can't cite to the Amber Heard case and hope that 
some other uh, jury or judge will follow it. But if the case goes up on appeal and there is a written opinion, that opinion would have precedential effect, which is one I reason pee, I'll be back. potentially the parties might settle before the appeal is completed. Uh, they might just do it to get rid of uncertainty with what the court of appeal might or might not do. 